Good morning and welcome to our daily devotional here in Greenwell Street. Delighted that you're joining with us. Just at the very outset, I just want to mention a book. We had got a number of these to encourage our folk in the coming up to Christmas during the Advent period to uh, be doing readings around the whole Advent, the coming of Christ. And it may be something that you yourself would be interested in. It's a book of 24 readings, so actually starting today, and uh, the book costs five pounds and it comes very well highly recommended by authors and speakers who i myself have read and indeed heard and so i'm looking forward very much to starting this myself uh, later on today if you'd be interested in one then please do contact me and we'll arrange to get it to you just as soon as possible and they're priced five pounds well let us quieten ourselves as we come to pray together let us pray our loving father as we turn to you today we do thank you that you're a god who is ever available to us lord it is our sin that would separate you from us and so we come at the very outset to confess our sin to confess our selfishness to confess our jealousy to confess our lust, to confess our greed, and to admit, O oh Lord, that we're far from what we ought to be. And yet if we know you, then at least by your grace we are not what we once were. And we pray that as we turn to your word today, and indeed over these next few weeks, as our minds and thoughts are turned toward the coming into the world of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we might indeed be thrilled by what we read and hear and that Lord we might be filled with joy not because Christ came the first time though we rejoice in that even as the angels and shepherds did but we rejoice that having come his grace is still being poured out upon all who look to and believe in him bless us with your presence grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit so that as we listen to your word, you will be speaking truth into our hearts for the sake of your dear Son, our Saviour, in whose name we pray. Amen. Well, I'm going to follow uh, the example of others and now from today and through to uh, Christmas, Christmas Eve probably will be the last of them. We're going to uh, focus on the Christmas theme and I'm going to use the couple of verses in Galatians 4 as the focus uh, for those little devotionals each day and I trust that they will take us more and more into the depth of meaning of the incarnation and of what it meant for Christ to come to be our saviour and so we're going to read just the opening verses in uh, Galatians chapter 4 and from verses 1 to 7. Paul writes, What I am saying is that as long as the heir is a child, he is no different from a slave, though he owns the whole estate. He is subject to guardians and trustees until the time set by his father. So also, when we were children, we were enslaved under the basic principles of the world. But when the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the full rights of sons. Because you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who cries out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And since you are a son, God has made you also an heir. Amen. When we ask the question, why did we need a Christmas at all? Where did Christmas come from? Why do we have Christmas, which is the birth of Christ? Why do we need a Christ? Why do we need the Christmas message? Can we not just take all of the religiosity out of Christmas and celebrate it for what it is, a festive season, as they so often refer to it on the media. Well, here, not only in this passage, but of course in many other passages, 
we get the fundamental reason why we need Christmas. And we read it in these verses. So also, when we were children, we were in slavery under the basic principles of the world. Whenever we think of slavery, as certainly from a biblical perspective, we tend to think of the Israelites in Egypt. You remember how Joseph had been sold as a slave into Potiphar's household, but how he rose to be prime minister in that land and how, in, in effect, through the wise decisions he made, he saved that nation. How his father and his brothers came down uh, into the land to find food and settle there and how the people uh, multiplied and they lived in Goshen because, of course, the Egyptians didn't want anything to do with shepherds. The Pharaoh, after G after, long after Joseph had died, a Pharaoh had forgotten all that Joseph had done and felt threatened by the Israelites multiplying in Goshen. And so he increased the pressure on them and enslaved them and made their lives miserable. That's what we tend to think of. And yet, of course, what we have in the Old Testament by way of the enslavement of the people in Egypt is a picture to us uh, of our own slavery. Because the Bible tells us that we're all held enslaved under the basic principles of the world. Or, to use another term, we are all enslaved by sin. Now, what that simply means is, of course, that sin is our master. That is, sin determines how we act. You see, you think of sin, don't you, so often as something that's out there, something we do, something we say, something somebody else does to you. We think of it in terms of actions or words. Of course, when the Bible thinks of sin, it thinks of sin as a power. And that power is exercised over us because we are conceived in sin and shape and in iniquity. That is, we are born enslaved by sin. We are born with our whole being distorted, twisted and mastered by sin. I often use that simple analogy. Whoever teaches a child to say no. Whoever teaches a child to be selfish and not share its toy with another. No, that comes from within. That comes from the nature that that child has derived from it's equally sinful parents. And you see that sin has a grip on us. The thing is its grip on us is such that we don't even realise it. If I was to say to some, and perhaps you're one of them, you know you're enslaved by sin, they would laugh at me. They're not enslaved by anything. And yet, of course, that's one of the deceitfulnesses of sin. We don't realise it. We don't realise it. And the reason we don't realise it is because we've never known anything different. You know how it was in the days of the slaves in America. How once emancipation came and the slaves were set free. Because they'd never known anything else, they found it extremely difficult to deal with life. Slavery was what they were used to. What happened as slaves was part and parcel of who they were. And you see, that's what's wrong with us. It's not that we became enslaved at some point in our lives. The Bible says we have been enslaved from the very moment we were conceived. And so we don't realise it. To us, this is reality. To us, this is real life when we're enslaved by sin. And that's why we need a saviour. Because just as the Israelites could not free themselves from the power of Pharaoh and needed the Lord to act on their behalf, so there is not one human being can deliver themselves from slavery to sin. They need one to act on their behalf. There's a little hymn. We've sung it once or twice in the past. Once I was bound by sin's galling fetters, chained like a slave, I struggled in vain. 
but I received a glorious freedom when Jesus broke my fetters in twain. Glorious freedom, wonderful freedom, no more in chains of sin I repine. Jesus, the glorious emancipator, now and forever he shall be mine. And that freedom from sin frees us from other things. And we'll develop that further tomorrow. Let's pray. Father, forgive us when we have thought of slavery as something that was external to us. Whereas the scripture would tell us we're enslaved by the very sin that indwells us. And Father, we recognise that. For Lord, we're conscious that there are spiritual things, perhaps as we are listening here today to this devotional, and it just doesn't make sense to us. We can't see it. And Lord, that's because we never have seen it. It has never made sense to us. We're not tuned in to spiritual things. And we don't have the wherewithal to tune in ourselves. We don't have the wherewithal to deliver ourselves from this awful bondage. Yet we thank you that the first Christmas was all about freeing slaves. And we pray, loving Father, that those listening to this devotional over these mornings will be thinking as they come up to Christmas, why was there a Christmas at all? And what does it mean for me? Father, might you grant grace to some, open their eyes to see themselves for what they are, enslaved by sin, but that you have provided us in Jesus Christ with a wonderful deliverer.